In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to do some effects using the mask editor. And as I said with the fat line uh, lesson, make sure that you do the creating mask lesson first so that you've got a good background in how the mask editor works rather than having to have it all re-explained. So if I come here and go to page 2, we've got some images that I've taken out of the Vinyl Master website. The whole Vinyl Master website was done using Vinyl Master itself, so that's just testament to the sorts of um, features and tools it's got. Here we've got um, an image that we want to blend into this image here, this background. This is a panel that's in the website. And of course, you know, you can use this tool to do any number of things. This is just a very uh, sort of simple example. I select both of these images here and I go top, right, which means they align to the top right to each other. And I'll zoom in here. Now what we want to do is in this particular example, we want to blend this, uh, the picture of this person here, we want to blend them into this background. And we can do that in the mask editor. If I select this image here, come to the mask tools and go down to credit, uh, create edit mask. I'll just resize it, suit the video area like that. A little bit, yep. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to blend this image. So the first thing to do is we've got to work out what tool is best for that, and it's this one here. This is our linear gradient tool. And what it does, oh, it's easy just to show you. If I left click here and drag, you can see what it's doing here. It's actually creating an interactive transparency. So it's going from very transparent to less transparent. And I've obviously got some controls about how I use that, so I can uh, use these controls here to make it far more um, more aggressive or less aggressive, as you can see. So if I go blend here and I click apply, that applies it on that level. And I can keep doing this until I'm happy with the result I'm looking for. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create this area around here to be quite see-through so that as the image sits on, on top of the uh, the panel that we've got for the Vinyl Master website, this is how we've done it, I click Accept here, you can see how this is blended in now, but you can just see a bit of a line here. If I zoom in there, you quite just see this bit of line as the image blends in, so it's not quite as far as we need to take this. So I select the image again, Mask Tools, Create Edit Mask, resize it for the video again, OK, and I can keep going. I mean, I don't. I'm not um, not restricted by that. So I can go here like this again and click apply, and I can get really aggressive and click on um, subtract here, and do this, and you can see it really get digs into the image, and click accept. But that's taken it too far. So I'll click undo, and I'll just go back here. Just want to show you the point that you can actually set this to be quite aggressive if you want it to be. Um, in this particular case, case blend is fine. So I just blend that up again. So every time I cl click apply I can redo another one uh, until I'm happy with the result. So the amount you would uh, blend an image in and, and the levels you take these things to clearly depends on the artwork and what you're trying to do. But this is just an example of what, how you can use the linear gradient tool. Click accept now and I'll zoom back into there. And now we can see that it's really blend that, uh, blended that image in so it actually looks like it's a part of the background there. You really can't see any lines or areas of where that image used to be. So that's the linear gradient tool. And that's a great way of doing these sorts of effects where you can create blended images on top of each other. You can see it's still a separate effect and there it is there like that. And you can just position that up there like that and that's that tool. Now another tool that you can do or another effect you can do in the um, the mask editor, and I'll use this duck as an example here, is a big net. Actually, no, what I'll do is I'll go to, I'll bring in the um, this lion's head. This is a good example of this first. I'll just draw that there. And I'll bring this into the uh, into the mask editor. And we've got this lion's face, which is an ideal candidate for doing a big net. Now, I'll show you what a big net is. I'll just click on this tool here. And we'll set it to circle because it's a very circular shape. And you can see that it's a, a very... Um, crisp mask. We don't want that. We want to give it a bit of um, a little bit of blending here, a bit of feathering. Okay, we click apply. We click accept. And I'll just move that out there and show you there. If I zoom into that. And you can see what's happened here. It's created like a big net effect on this image here. If I switch the mask off and switch it back on, or I invert the mask, you can clearly see what it's done. And that's how you create a sort of like a simple big net effect. Now you've got other con uh, other tools in there. If I go back in here, make it a bit smaller again, and I can say make it square. I'll clear the mask.
task first, make it square, and I'll then bring it in like this, as you can see. So you can either numerically change it or use the slider here like this. That's easy enough. Click Apply and click Accept, and there we have that effect. So it's a sort of squared off effect. And depending on what settings you're using and what sort of image you've got, you'll get different effects doing this. Now, that's good for doing basic big net effects. If you get something like this, which is an unusual shape, and let's say we wanted to big net this and then maybe do a sepia effect or something, do some more advanced effects here, what we can do is uh, select this image, go to the mask edit tools here, resize them for the video, like so. Okay, what we want to do is create a, um, a sort of a more shapely big net here. So what we can do is we can use the eraser tool here, make it quite large, zoom out a bit, and sort of knock into shape. And if I had a tablet and a pen here, I could probably be more accurate about this. I'm just using a mouse at the moment. You know, so you can improve this by using more suitable tools. I've probably gone a little bit far there. I'll just bring that back just a bit. I want to show you this here. So I've sort of you know, in a sense, I've sort of knocked together the rough shape of my big net that I want to create here. And I can come back and improve that in a moment. And what I'm going to do here is use this blue tool. So I click on blue here, and I might set it to say, say 50 and click enter. Now, what happens, I don't know why that resize, I hit the wrong spot. What happens is here, if I go into this mode, you can see what's happened. It's created this sort of blurry mask effect as a particular shape that I've created. And if I click on accept there, it's actually not too bad. That's really the sort of thing I was trying to uh, achieve. But I can go back in here, of course, and I can edit this any time I want. I can just use, say, the magic brush so it's less aggressive. And I'll just make that a little bit more aggressive like this. So it sort of cuts it in a bit. And I might make it a little bit closer. Just like that there. Okay. And as you can see. And I can then just blur that out. And I might set it to, say, 45 and I can have a look at that there and I can see what I've done. So it's a little bit closer now. I can click Accept and now I've got that effect there. And what I could do now is um, perhaps give it some duo tone which gives it that super effect. Um, I'd need to change the colours there and maybe make the uh, darker colour this sort of murky brown colour that they tend to use for this effect. And you can see there that I've created this sort of big net effect whereas this is a more sort of standard one. Now here is an interesting problem. I need to, to remove that, so I can just go into here. I can easily fix that. I just go to the... See, what I'll do is I'll look at it as the mask. And it's just picking this up here in the corner. So if I get the eraser, and just erase that right out. So there's... Oop, went too far there. Erase that right out like that. And go around the edges and click Accept. You now see that that's gone there. And if I move over something there, I'm getting this sort of sepia effect that I'm looking for and it's sort of quartered up there a bit too, which I can come back and I can edit that as well. But the point is is that to make a shapely big net like that is very easy. You just basically knock it into shape with your uh, eraser tool and then create a blur. You can create a default type um, uh, big net doing it this way, using that default tool. And of course, as I showed you before, you've got this blend tool here, which shows you how to blend, linear blend um, these effects. Now, the great thing is, is you can keep bringing things in and applying mask effects to them and you can blend images together and then convert them to a bitmap uh, using this images tool or you've got to select an image first and you convert something to a bitmap and you can keep blending on top of each other there's some other lessons I've done where I've done this sort of thing um, and you can see this happening so you know I uh, encourage you to look at these other lessons look at the creating uh, a mask from scratch lesson that's a that's a good way of getting a, a handle on the mask editor and how it works uh, as an entire program and uh, that's the end of this lesson